Although I had been a petrol head for quite a few years, I was not always a power boater. In fact, my younger days were spent with rowing boats, kayaks and sailing dinghies. Because of recent travel restrictions due to the Covid pandemic, I thought about getting an old kayak again so I could enjoy paddling the freshwater lochs around the Trossachs. But then I decided to take up rowing again, as I already had a rowboat. The 2.75 metre F rib rose reasonably well. As it's been a few years since I rode any distance, I wasn't sure of my fitness levels, so I chose to have my reintroduction to rowing at Loch Chon near Aberfoyle in the Trossachs. It's not quite two miles in length, so I estimated a round of its perimeter would be around four miles, so a reasonable distance to go, but not too far to overdo the exercise first time round. I parked in the designated area at the southeastern end of the loch, and was not surprised to find I had it all to myself, as the fishing season ended last month. It's only a 10 metre carry from car to water's edge, and as I didn't have fuel tanks, outboards or toolboxes, it only took a few minutes to get the boat assembled. It was a pure delight listening to the silence of nature after the 12 volt inflator did its work. It was the only mechanical noise I heard on this adventure. Soon I was as quiet as I dipped my oars in fresh water for the first time in more years than I cared to remember. There were one or two brief spells of sun which highlighted the autumn colours well. There was also some scotch mist and some rain, as well as plenty of grey sky. I must confess I found the sound of water being pushed by oars very relaxing and so far it was quite effortless as I was in no hurry. I hope you can excuse the odd camera jolt and unusual angle as it was an impulse adventure and I can't hold a gimbal while rowing. I'll need to make some proper mounts with cameras for future videos. Leaving the launch area, I went clockwise to the outflow of the loch where there is an old boathouse. Then I continued my round only feet from the loch banks as I had no worries of a propeller grounding. It's a big advantage of rowing. In Scotland, you are free to access any loch or river for paddling purposes only. This right does not cover mechanical powered boats, which is why I am returning to rowing. 
I don't require permission to row or paddle the guppy in the Trossex lochs. When I came across this little stony bay, I decided it was the perfect place to pull up and have my breakfast break while soaking in the loch scenery. And if you can't tell from the video, I thoroughly enjoyed the slow and peaceful pace of this paddling adventure. As long as I can get out in a boat, I don't mind what kind it is. After my brief break, I paddled across to the first island which is nearest Coffee Break Bay. It is the largest of the islands in Loch Chon so I just had to land on it to have a look around, for no other reason than to say I have been there. I could see from the faint track that I was not the first to visit the island. In fact, it has a wild camp spot complete with open fireplace. It also looked like someone had built a house here in times long gone by. I made a mental note to one day bring a tent and have a night on the island myself. A smear of rain made video work difficult as I rode to the other islands in the middle of the loch. When puttering around, I often row backwards as it is easier to see where I'm going without having to peer over my shoulder. I didn't land in these islands, so I'm afraid I can't say that I have been there. Another advantage of rowing the small Trossex lochs is the wind is not quite so important. It was forecast to be 10 miles per hour gusting to 20. But the fetch is too short for big waves and the hills also shelter it, which is why it was flat cam at the edges. It was now gusting to 20 miles per hour and I was paddling as well as getting blown along to the end of the loch. The yellow personal location beacon is a permanent fixture to my life jacket. Perhaps overkill on a small Scottish loch like this 
However, an accident can happen at any time, which is why I always wear a life jacket. A handheld VHF radio is completely useless on Scotland's hills and lochs, which is why I don't bother too much with the radio, but I'm never without my PLB, which can be used on both land and sea. I had now travelled the full length of Loch Chon, and all I had to do was row back, but this time heading into the wind. It wasn't as hard as I first imagined, and I did the two miles in one go without a stop. It took just short of an hour of rowing. Once back at the southeastern end of the loch, I sat in this sheltered bay and had my lunch. As I happily munched my sandwiches in stunning and peaceful surroundings, I wondered why it took a Covid lockdown to get me to visit my local lochs. I just had a perfect half day, a four hour workout and used around a litre of coffee and a handful of calories. I'm looking forward to rowing around more local lochs and I've now started my winter project, making a set of lee boards to stop sideways drift and a small mast and sail to assist the downwind passages. Yep, the guppy goes green, at least until the lockdowns ease again. Thanks for watching.